Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Bill Crane reports on the air. Um, and today we have got a power-packed show. Wow. With Chris Gleason here by my side to rein me in and attempt to keep me under control. <laughs> we shall go right to item one. So, last week, in talking to Chris, I happened to mention that I was reading quite a book. And I asked her, as a homework assignment, mm -hmm. to please read uh, the book. I said it was easy reading, and we compromised. You said you'd read half of it. Well, I managed to read it all. There we go. All right. Um, and what a prescient move that was on my part based on the uh, results of last week, the shooting down in Texas at the high school. Right. Because this book is entitled School Days by Robert Parker. And of course, it's a low-grade Spencer murder mystery. Um, and I rather enjoy his work. Uh, he's got a good sense of humor. He's got a wonderful sense of humor. Um, and there's nothing terribly deep about his no, writing. No. Um, but guess what he wrote about? He wrote about disaffected youths that were having trouble in high school. And I'm going to let you in on a big secret now. And I don't want any of you blasting this around, but Chris was a teacher. So I like to have her so um, <clears throat> read some of this stuff. And so this is about a group of kids, druggies, mm -hmm. some of them, mm -hmm. promiscuous. Um, some of them. Some of them. Um, bullied, some of them. Um, and they hate school. I don't think there was one of them in there that said they enjoyed school, was yeah, it? Right. And they hated the teachers mm -hmm. and the administration. Mm -hmm. So now, Christine, a $64,000 question. Uh oh. How close to being spot on is that book? I honestly couldn't tell you because I was an elementary school teacher and not a high school teacher. Yeah, but you guys gossiped about things. No, you were um, part of the teaching community. You can't bail out on me on this. Well, I think. He's pointing out what's in the news, basically, and he's saying that it's affecting both ends of the spectrum. One of the shooters in the book was from a middle class, very quiet, well-established community with affluent. And the other one was from a poor neighborhood that didn't was on welfare, basically. and. Um, was, came from a broken home. And essentially, it didn't say that there was, both of them lacked nurturing. And that's what brought on their shooting, mm -hmm. is because one in, was in a sterile atmosphere and one was in I don't care atmosphere. And I think the common thread was neither of the shooters were nurtured. They were totally different. It came from different backgrounds, e but that one common factor was nurturing from there. Yeah, brother. I think too. Also, you could make the uh, um, case that events put them together, not friendship. It was oh, oh. events that bonded them. They were both angry for different reasons. Right. Uh, one of them fit fairly well into high school, played on the football team, and was known as, well, kind of a quiet individual. But, but the other one got good grades. So they both had some advantages, so to speak, to them. Yeah. They, were, they weren't black and white. Should I not say that? <laughs> <laughs> you can say anything on this show. But they were, they were both white students. From yes, they were. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you enjoy the book? I did. I thought it was very light. I, I thought that it was sort of like a canned plot. 
and canned, you know, he had a, a little bit of sex to keep you awake, and he had a little bit of this, a little bit. He had all the ingredients that you would have in a novel to keep it going. And his dog played a part. So you had serious parts, and then you had relief, comic <laughs> relief. So I enjoyed the book. I, it's not my See, type of book because I don't like to. I find nonfiction more fascinating sure. than fiction. Oh, yeah. But as a, a pastime, it was interesting. I mean, you can read this one with your eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I thought that it was interesting that after having given you the book, now we have the shootings down in Texas. Oh, it was right, very current to what's yeah. going on now. Yeah. Um, so the uh, lad down in Texas killed 10, mm -hmm. injured 10, mm -hmm. and took his father's guns. Mm -hmm. A rather familiar story so far. All oh, right. Alona. But then you hear some of the students that know him that were surprised by this. Um, I don't know. I'm almost getting to the point now where uh, nothing surprises me anymore. <laughs> well, one thing that I noticed that was a little bit different in this situation, at least from the reporting, is that he said he tried to avoid the kids he liked. Yeah. He, that's exactly right. Yes. And I haven't heard that about other shootings. Uh, it seems to me Columbine. Uh, they were the uh, trench coat mafia out there, those two. And I think they skipped a couple of people, okay. too. Purposely? But, purposely, yeah. Uh, I think. But this stuff all begins to mix together. And that's sad. Oh. We're getting too much of it. Um, but uh, I, I, one of the things that has come out of this um, is that we are getting the armchair experts now. <laughs> I'll, how are we going to solve this? And there was, now, you, we, we talked earlier about an article I asked you to read, and you said, oh, I, I think it was tongue-in-cheek. Mm -hmm. Well, here's an article from a guy that writes into the Globe. Mm -hmm. Fairly often, I've seen his byline, Bob Sweeney from Warwick, Rhode Island. With the latest horrific killing of students at Santa Fe High School in Texas, the immediate need is for extreme defensive means to deter an active shooter from inflicting serious harm. So far, so good. With over 300 million guns in circulation in the U.S. and no new gun control legislation can stop a deviant behavioral, behavioral perpetrator from gaining access to a high-powered weapon. My suggestions are listed below. Are just a few that can be immediately employed. Okay. So I want you to give me thumbs up or thumbs down <laughs> okay. on these suggestions. I must tell you, the first one is a pip. Have all staff issued panic buttons to alert all of a pending emergency? I think that already exists partially. Um, in the elementary school, they put phones in every room so that if there was a problem, the teacher could call down to the office. So that's sort of in a place. A form of a panic button? Yeah, a phone. It wasn't a panic button per se, but it was a means of communicating a dangerous situation. Yeah. So Those have been around forever, though. Right. Even the center school had them in 1950, I think. Well, not the school where I taught. It was fairly recent. Well, I've been retired for a long time. but um, And you could also call out. Maybe you're thinking that you could call down to the center office. Right. These you could call out so you could get a 911 oh, okay. call, or things like that. So um, I don't think that's new and innovative. So. Okay. I'd say 
No, no big deal there. Now, this one you'll probably like. Have stun guns available for those who qualify? Sissy. Remote, oh, this is good. Remote control water cannons <laughs> and smoke or tear gas released from the ceilings. All right, these are active ones. Passive, bulletproof glass on all classroom doors. Now listen, I'm a nutcake, but even I'll go along with that. No, why not? I don't see the purpose. Okay. What's a guy going to do? Go down the corridor and, and shoot in through the windows? That doesn't make I, sense. Do. Well, when you're, you're walking up and down and you're spraying bullets all over the place with an automatic weapon like an AR-15. So <laughs> the windows to the classrooms are like this yeah. big, and oftentimes they are covered. So but, you can't see through them. But, you know, putting bulletproof glass in there would not be expensive. Yeah, but it's such a small amount, I don't think it's worthwhile. You might as well make the whole door bulletproof. Well, it's not a bad idea either. They should be reinforced steel doors. All right. We won't do that. She doesn't care about the kids. Uh, direct video links to all first responders. I don't understand how that would work, or even what he's talking about. Well, does he mean like so that the people who come in can view the video of what's happening in the classroom? I don't know. I, I, would I think, don't know. Well, see, that was one of the major problems, wasn't it, in Florida, that the people went there, but he didn't know what was happening inside, yeah. so he, he didn't he know what... He didn't do anything. Right. Yeah, he established the perimeter, and that was it. Right. Yeah. Um, single entrance for visitors with metal scanners. I think in high schools in Boston, they have scanners for the students. So I don't see how that is innovative. It just makes the people who visit go through I think it what too. he's saying is this is what everybody should do. But it's not so much the students you have to worry about sometimes, it's people coming in. Right. Read that one again then, please. Single entrance for visitors with metal scanners. Well, I'm trying to think what happens now. And the, you have to be buzzed in yes. by the secretary. Or by, uh, well, up to Tri-County, it's a guy sitting at a desk facing the door. Is that his only duty? I don't know. But he's there. he's been there when I've gone up there for lunch. Okay. So, um, so and I think the problem lies there that you're going to have to pay somebody to do that. This is what I found so disconcerting when I was teaching. They get, automatically gave that buzz-in activity to the secretary. Now, the secretary has is not chained to her desk all the time. She gets to go to lunch. She has to answer the phone. She has to go in to see the principal she and things like that. She probably also has to answer the call of nature. <laughs> so I don't think that's, they, I think they're trying to avoid having to pay somebody to do that. But I think if, I don't think that's a bad, I think that you should have a designated person who's their job to watch that door because it's, so many people, you know, you look like a delivery man, you get buzzed in. I don't think that the person, the secretary is expert enough to know who to pass, who to buzz in and who not. To. There's a good chance, too. The secretary can't see who's at the door, the way some schools are set up. Well, it's difficult, but then they shouldn't uh, they should buzz have, them at all. They should have closed uh, circuit TV, but th still. That's a good idea to yeah. have the TV you, or the you, entrance. You get way. a fuzzy picture at best sometimes. Um, I, I I agree with this. I think there should be a single entrance only, and um, I think it should be um, a man or woman who is armed and who is trained to use arms. Now the way they use it. Tri County, I'm saying, I'm, you know, because that's the only high school I've been to in the last 30 years. Uh, the guy sits at the desk, and you have to go to him oh. and sign in. Now, 
listen, if you're carrying an M16 and you go over to, well, you know, it's a, he, he better act quick. But um, I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Report any suspicious person or activity to proper authorities. Well, that's a no-brainer. But the, also, you have to explain the article you showed me beforehand, where people are reporting special suspicious things that aren't really suspicious. Suspicion is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, but you told me that that article was written tongue in cheek. Yeah, well, I'm saying. Yeah, well, I that, don't think that's that. What I'm saying, I'm just claiming that because I'm saying. What, what, like you said, is in the eye of the beholder. What one person thinks is suspicious, another person doesn't. Um, then I'll tell you two stories. Okay. How's that? First story, um, Jesse Jackson, mm -hmm. in his book, mm -hmm. uh, he was talking about teenage toughs in okay. the city. And um, he was interviewed on a TV program, and he had this in his book. And he said, I was walking down the sidewalk and coming at me, six teenagers, black teenagers. What did you do, Jesse? I crossed the street. Mm -hmm. So it's not just blacks that see fear uh, or that are suspicious of six teenagers mm -hmm. rolling at them. It's blacks themselves. Because most of the crime in the black neighborhood is black on black. Um, the second story, I was at the Jacob Javits Center doing a trade show, mm. and my friend uh, Will Chin was uh, with me, uh, and uh, Will was with a different company at the time than I was, but we were chatting, and he says, hey, let's go have lunch, when lunchtime arrived, and I said, great. He said, I was told about this really good deli about six blocks or eight blocks that way, mm -hmm. Angelo's or something. I said, lead on, man. So we're out walking on the sidewalk, talking, blah, 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 and walking along. And so uh, across the street is a cop. And he walks across the street. <sniffs> Held up traffic while he walked across. Oh. Guys, come here. He said, look behind you. Ducking away was for ne'er-do-wells, okay. teenage ne'er-do-wells. He said, they've been following you for two blocks. He said, these guys fall in behind you guys leaving the Javits Center oh. every day of the week. And they either hold you up or roll you. He said, when you get two more blocks down, mm -hmm. It's the Wild West. He said, go back to the Javits Center and get yourselves a hot dog. I said, thank you, lawman, and we hot-footed it right back. No hero for that stuff. But it's dangerous out there. So there, don't go to the Javits Center. <laughs> All right, wish list. Need an app developed for your smartphone showing all the life safety features that the school provides. Specifically show all emergency exits and their paths of egress from your existing location and directing you to safely exit to the outside and out of harm's way. All right, you get a picture of this now? Mm. Bang, 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 bang. And he goes, hold up with the shooting, please. <laughs> I got to pull up my uh, phone here. Oh, what the hell app was that again? Oh, this is a map of Newark, New Jersey. I'm looking for how to get out of this school. <clears throat> that is, I, but in those situations, I think the, uh, 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 the fellow students do take out their phones and they do not dial 911. Maybe some of them do, but I tell you what, 90% of them are running. Well, again, it depends on this situation. And but make it 91, because I'd be running too. 
I don't think that's a bad idea. Well, I don't think anyone's going to take the time to call up that app to find out how to get the hell out of the place. Well, I don't know. I think teenagers are much quicker than we are. Well, they're much smarter than I am. I know that. Uh, there can be better means developed by professionals who are knowledgeable in these matters, but the urgent need exists now so all of our students and staff can be strongly protected as failure is not an option. Strongly protected. I agree with that. Now. now before you go on to something else. Yes. No, I'm not going to go on to something else. Huh? I'm sticking with this one. Okay, for a well, bit this, this is on the same Go trend. Ahead. It's the old saying guns don't shoot people, people shoot people. And this morning on Channel 4, at around 8 o'clock, the news comes on, and they had a guy who said something that I've been saying all along. And that is, he said that it's not the guns, it's the culture. It's the, we live in a violent culture. You see violence on TV, you hear about violence on the news. And he says, that's gonna change. Okay. It's not all these mechanical, electronic things that will change everything. The other th point I wanna make is like 20 years ago in Franklin, a kid brought a shotgun to school. So this is not something new. But they were able to talk him out of it. And I'm not sure exactly how they did it. And it wasn't even the regular teacher. It was just, he brought it into the classroom where there was a substitute that day. And they were able to handle it successfully. And I think that's because of the culture. The other thing I think is very effective would be um, education classes in the high school where they role play different positions on what to do so that if you're in that situation you get to know what to do plus you not only are being attacked but you're also the attacker you role play that so you can understand where they're coming from and what's going on in their head and and they have something like that and it said, like, if you were in the high school and you saw a girl running down the hall and you saw a black running after her, what would you think? And it, the final answer was that the girl had taken something from the black and he was trying to get it back. But that's not the first image that comes into your mind. Oh. So it's a retraining of what you're thinking that I think would help. Well, <clears throat> The, it, if culture is the problem, Norfolk obviously is very uncultural. Well, because we have, we, I've told the kids, uh, I used to talk to the kids at CCD about everything. And one of the things I drummed into them is you don't know how lucky you are living in Norfolk. Oh. <laughs> and I'd get things like, oh, it's so stupid in Norfolk, there's nothing to do. So, I brought in some stuff and showed them some uh, CDs of mm. the drug culture in Weymouth, I think mm. it was. Okay. And the kid, his mother was narrating, uh, he died of an overdose. Mm. And um, Norfolk is incredibly safe, knock on wood. Um, but yet, you don't have to go far to find violence. It's right down there in Woonsocket. To find what? W violence. Violence. Oh. It's over in Brockton. Mm -hmm. It's down in Dedham. I mean, you can find it without having to look too hard. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Norfolk, Medfield, Millis, Medway, uh, and then the rich spots, Weston and uh, oh, Lincoln mm -hmm. and all those places. And we're sort of, you know, the fertile crescent. Okay. Yeah, well, we're sort of the safe crescent here inside this circle. Outside this circle, it's the Wild West. And I'm going to say something very racial. Go ahead. 
they're all whites in those communities. Wonderful observation. What do you draw from that? <laughs> well, not only are they white, but they're educated and they're middle class, they're economically stable. There's a lot of things that go to it besides just the color. But as you mentioned them, majority of the people in those towns are white. Stable families. Right. Good schools. Right. Better schools than the hell holes in Boston. But that's not necessarily the result of the money that's spent or the, or the interest. It's because of the population. You can't have people who can't even speak English, five or six different languages in the classroom, and have and exp it, that's tension right then. Um, look, you could make a heck of a case that American-born blacks have trouble understanding English. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, really? Man, I'll tell you, uh, I, uh, I believe that that's an impediment. I really and truly do. Mm. They don't read well, all right, well, because they haven't been taught. And they, here's a problem I see. Putting white teachers in those schools, that's not what the black community wants. I don't think. So I think it's very difficult. So why don't we have black teachers in there? We don't have enough black teachers to go around. And why don't we have enough black teachers? Lack of education. Lack of the uh, ability to go to college. Or even the interest in becoming a teacher. Even the interest. I was, yeah, the, the motivation. Yeah, right. So, I mean, you pick at this gab and you can find lots of uh, <laughs> problems, and none of them are easily solved. No, otherwise they've already been solved. You and I are going to have to solve them. So, I interrupted your train of thought. You were talking about the special crescent. of, of Yeah, I, and how lucky the kids are and how close violence is and crime. Um, and they seem impervious to it. Of course, their heads are full of other stuff at that point in time. Uh, but it's as though their parents never discussed anything like that with them. No. Why would they? Yeah. Well, being a parent these days is a tough job, too, because <laughs> most of the time you've got both parents are working. Mm -hmm. If you're fortunate enough to have two parents, chances are both are working. And the majority of the people in this town have both parents. Yeah. Yep. And their concern is about the soccer and the football and the baseball. That's and that kind of thing. So not only is it out of the children's minds, it's out of the parents' minds too. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It is. Um, sort of like uh, my little chipmunk that lives out front. Running around outside, he has to worry about hawks and stuff like that. When he goes down, it's hole, he's safe. Mm -hmm. The hole is not hawk. And how long is it going to last? we get a ways to go yet. You think so? I think so. But... Now, I mean, take a look at places like Oakland, uh, Watts in <clears throat> Los Angeles, uh, Bed-Stuy in Brooklyn, and I mean, these are horrible places, and they continue to expand mm -hmm. because people have to live someplace. Mm -hmm. We continue to expand here in Norfolk. But we're building six hundred and seven hundred thousand dollar homes, and you might as well put a sign out front: "Blacks need not apply," because you know um, it's econo they're economically blocked from coming out here. Um, I have no answer for this, none. But. I uh, noticed 
that we had a piece in the globe, analysts cite difficulty in securing schools. So here we are. Here's the answer. Secure the schools. Oh, we can't do that. Oh, no. Uh, there are too many entrances and exits on our more than 8,000 campuses in Texas, contrasting that with the security at office buildings and courthouse. Had there been one single entrance, possibly for every student, maybe he would have been stopped. But the thing is, you've got a, a larger concentration of people. You have kids that aren't all that knowledgeable about how to escape a building. You need all those fire exits for the kids. As long as they open out, and as long as they can be locked from the outside, there's no problem with that. Well, that, that's, they, they have that now. Yeah. So as long as no one opens that door, mm -hmm. the bad guy's not going to be able to come in that door. Maybe they should have the doors alarmed. They do. They do. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they ring on a um, computer board on a secretary's office. Well, not well they I, damn well should. Not when I was teaching. When we went out for recess, we had to take a key to get back into the building. And then there was always inevitable a kid out there who wanted to go to the bathroom during recess, and you have to unlock it and lock it. And the kid could very easily, when he came out again, leave the door open. But I don't think that they're wired in to have an alarm go off when people go in and out. When I retired, I worked for a few more years as a guard for um, Factory Mutual down in Norwood, FM, insurance company. Uh, and I used to work overnight, mm. midnight to eight, in a building all by myself. Three-decker, in the dark, saving electricity by shutting off almost all the lights. Um, and guess what? There was one, two, three, four, five or six doors you could get in. But the only way you could exit, uh, get in is with a key, mm -hmm. with a, a, a sliding plastic card like in a motel. Mm -hmm. And just the main door, and you needed to do it twice on the main mm -hmm. door, the outer door and the inner door. Now, there were no super brains there, but yet they were able to do that. And I never had anyone get in any of the other doors unless they had a, and at night you had to have like the master to get in. But the thing is, on these shootings, it's not like you're keeping adults. These are students. These are students going to class. You're not going to let the student come in? The student is, must be carrying a weapon. All right, you make them put its backpack on the belt and it goes through the metal detector. You've got to do that, that's, absolute minimum. That's going to take a lot of time. Then, then we're, we're going to continue to have schools littered with dead bodies. You've got to stop them. Listen, that doesn't happen in the state of Israel. Yeah, but the people in Israel are different people. They, I mean, they go in from... This is probably just history. They go there to protect Israel. They're trained to shoot. They, aren't, don't they all have to become part of the army at one time or other? You all have to bring your rifle home and mm -hmm. keep it in your closet in good working order. But uh, they have soldiers guarding the schools. Really? Yes. So oh, of course the, they've got the Palestinians. They, they have unfriendly neighbors. Right. Well, they've got to do that though. So in this country, we've got unfriendly neighbors. They're coming out of the woodwork. You've got to stop them. And we can't continue to say, I don't want guns in school. I don't want little Betty to see somebody wearing a gun in my school. Well, fine, okay? Little Betty is gonna be in a lot more danger without people in there. Well, 
I don't think that those mechanical devices are going to stop what's happening. I think it, the, you have to educate the students. You have to somehow take care of the people who are known to be problems. Okay. These people all had put red flags up. They knew about these people. They had many offenses. Well, this last kid here, uh, when asked, his classmates were surprised he did that. Yeah, but didn't they say, other people have told me, I haven't heard it directly, that there were red flags about this kid? That he A couple was, of the others, but I, don't, I not, think on this one, I think that it was, some of the uh, classmates were, you know, he was... The red flag warnings were either non-existent are very imperceptible. Um, but to me, uh, anyway, they're talking about the, this, and then Texas has stricter regulations for doors than it does for guns. Oh, that's clever. <laughs> uh, so anyway, this whole story is about doors. Okay. Now, here's what I think. And I just dashed these notes off real quick while I was sitting watching TV. Believe that it could happen here in Norfolk. Mm -hmm. Building security, controlled access is absolutely a must. Armed security at school and not retirees or <laughs> old fogies, young, physically fit, well-trained, motivated personnel uh, from the police department, ideally. Uh, but if not, uh, from a first-class security outfit, not like the ones I used to work for. The only thing they were concerned about with me was I there on time. Right, right. Do you think that's attainable? Do you think that they can attract those I, people and pay for them? I, and pay for them here yeah. in Norfolk? We never met anything we didn't want to pay for in this town. We don't have a taxation problem in this town. We got a spending problem. But yes, we can afford this. Well, no, let me put it in no way. It, it's not, we have got to afford this. It's not the, a matter of affording it. It's a matter of designating the funds to pay for it. Same difference. Same difference. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I mean, it's, it's money to spend. I mean, we can pay $100,000 to put a well in to water the grass. You can take that $100,000 and pay for a couple of guards from one well, of these here's what I'm, That's what I'm saying. We don't have a problem in this town mm -hmm. about tax. We have a problem mm -hmm. about spending and how we allocate our money. Mm -hmm. But this isn't, I don't think this is pie in the sky. I think this is absolutely mandatory that we start doing things like this. And I'd love to know, do we have a, a safety plan in this town for the schools other, sure. other than get under the desk or do what your teacher says? What else can you do? What else would you put for a safety plan? Well, I would say there should be drills at the very least. Mm -hmm. The police should be trained. We should have a police presence in these schools. And it should be known that Norfolk takes this seriously. Um, yeah, I, but, you know, the thing is, criminals find a way of getting around it. They, so, these kids so, aren't criminals. They're halfwits. So they don't go into the school. They shoot them out in the playground. Well, if that's the case, why don't we just quit now and let them shoot so many kids a year because they're going to do it anyway. So you have to somehow get a hold of the people who are mentally ill and have problems and solve their problems so they don't oh, yeah. feel that they have to resort to killing people. That's pie in the sky stuff, kiddo. First of all, doctors have something called confidentiality. Mm -hmm. And they will not talk about any of their patients that are tipping over a little bit. So you can't get answers out of them. They will not volunteer information. 
If you tell me, son, it stays with me all the time in my files and they're locked, I'll never repeat anything. I can't. I took an oath. So how the devil... Well, you change the laws because... That's like, never going to happen. Well, if a child, and this has happened to me, I learned that a child is being abused yep. at home. I have to, by law, report it. If you see somebody in your classroom that's having a problem, I suppose what you say, after, the next point is after you report it, it's out of my hands and I don't have any control over it. But um, it's, I, I don't agree, I don't disagree with this last one about having a, somebody there on site that's armed and trained to handle it. Also, smoking, you know that smoking now is greatly diminished. Yes, it is. And I attribute that to the smoking programs that they had in the schools. And over time, it slowly, inch by inch, it changed. You couldn't smoke in a, the hospital, say, and then you couldn't smoke in the restaurant, and then you couldn't smoke on in the school, and then you couldn't smoke on the school grounds. Each one of these is incremental changes. And I think the same thing has to be done here. You're not going to overnight change it. You have to slowly, inch by inch, and there's going to be a time that's right. I believe that We've always known that smoking is bad. Even in colonial times, they said it was a disgusting habit. And yet it existed all these times. And then it comes because to- Because it was a, addictive. It, it comes to a point where, the turning point, where people say, this is enough, we're going to do something about it. And I th hopefully we're at a turning point now where they're actually gonna be doing something about this. About what? About the shootings in the school. And I think it's through education. I said, and this is terribly simplistic, I've been against video games from the very get-go and the violence that they see on TV. They're, psychologically, y you reach um, certain levels and then it's not, a, it's not important anymore. Like, um, you see all these TV shows. They have to keep up, up in the amount of violence in them. They have to keep up, keeping up the number of deaths in it and the um, amount of gruesome. It used to be detective stories. You didn't see blood. And then you saw blood and then you had two or three killings and things going on in, in a half an hour. Now it seems like all the shows have to have a corner in them. You have to see the... Uh, doctor, it was a Dr. M or something like that. And all of them are, are going to the morgue now where you're seeing actual autopsies. And that seems, you know, one time you saw all cowboys and then there was all detectives and now it's all... NCIS. NCIS and now it's beginning to be all corners. Yeah? Because you be, it's just like the frog in the pot of water. You heat it up and he gets used to it, used to it. I'm afraid that this is going to happen with the schools. You're just going to be, become immune to the shootings, and after a while you're going to say, oh, yeah, just another shooting, big deal. Well, th there's a problem here, and, and I tend to agree with you, but education, <laughs> maybe the answer... 40 years downstream, but there's going to be an awful lot of dead bodies laying around Well, you've got to start interim. somewhere. I understand that, but there's other means that we should be taking and, and making these schools into maximum security schools, it seems to me, is where we should start immediately. That's going to give us the most bang for the buck. Now, unfortunately, that's a two-edged sword. Because then the nutbags are going to go to the mall and shoot up the mall instead. Or they're going to uh, drive their car down uh, a packed uh, street during uh, shopping time and mow down people. 
it seems to me that we have gotten so easy on crime in this country, we've forgotten that prisons are, first of all, for punishment. They have to be. Otherwise, if it weren't for that, <laughs> we'd just go out and commit crimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no punishment. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get five years in the can. No, I'll get parole. Number two, they're to protect us True. For, from the bad guys. Mm -hmm. Number three, once you've accomplished number one and number two, mm -hmm. number three, you can start to work with the prisoners and try to educate them. But some of them have a grade school education and they think that books are stupid and uh, I make my money on the street, I'm a wise guy, you know, and all that stuff. Getting them to sit down and be force-fed a book? Well, no, this doesn't have to come out of books. No, I know that, but and you're right. But it takes counselors, more than teachers, I think counselors, that can sit down and reason with these guys. And it's almost going to have to be one-on-one. -on -one. I don't think you can do it in a classroom atmosphere. Well, I think that for the majority of people who have end up in prison, that they've already formed their habits. And yep. That you're not going to change a lot of them. Yeah. I think the, the real key to all of this, I'll go back to what I said a thousand times, jobs in the inner city so that they don't get involved selling pot, so they don't get involved in petty theft. They actually get involved in having a job. And jobs are going to be a big problem, not only for the inner cities, but the suburbs too. When computers are taking over more and oh, more yeah. jobs. And, and, and listen, you're going to need real training to get a decent job in the coming years. Oh, there's going to be sales positions, and there's going to be uh, electricians, and there's going to be plumbers, and all that kind of stuff. But still, uh, a lot of the manufacturing jobs, you're going to have something cooking up in the old squash, or else uh, you're going to be pushing a broom around. Um, and even the broom jobs are going because they have these little robots that go around <laughs> and sweep up the floor. High-tech brooms. Um, I get a bunch of things here. Maybe we can hit a couple of them. J.J. Uh, Watt is a professional football player. Okay. Uh, and he's quite a guy. Plays for the Houston, um, Houston, uh, they're the Texans, I think. Uh, and uh, when Houston had their flood, that, was that horrible flood last mm -hmm. year, uh, he raised, he started, and he said, I'm going to try to raise $200,000. Mm -hmm. He raised $38 million. Wow. And he, he's from the community, Houston, mm -hmm. And he is such a great guy. Yeah. This week, he very quietly let all the people know who had lost a family member that he would pay for all 10 funerals. Wow. He's a guy that can afford to do that. Mm -hmm. But he's doing his part. He's giving back. How many of these athletes give back to their community. Mm -hmm. They run away from that community as fast as they can and go to Las Vegas or LA or heaven only knows where else. A CBS poll released today indicates President Trump uh, is uh, credited for the good economy we're having by 68% of the people. Now that's CBS that did that. 68% of the people polled said that President Trump is responsible for the good economy. And he is. Well, I don't agree with that. Well, who, who passed the tax cut bill? 
who, who did what? Who passed the tax cut bill? Who championed but the, it? But the tax bill hasn't gone into effect yet. It doesn't, your income tax didn't change this year. It doesn't change till next year. People are getting a lot more money in their paychecks because the withholding is way down. Okay. How about the, all the money that's coming back from offshore? I, I have being no idea. It's pumped into the economy. I have no idea. He's done a marvelous job. It seems I think the economy doesn't depend on one person. It takes time for it all to add up. I mean, it's not something you can do overnight. Maybe he's helped it, but I'm not saying oh, he didn't help it, but I'm saying that he's not responsible for all of it. He canceled like a thousand of the restrictions that Obama had uh, signed, uh, stifling business. Yeah, but I don't... I'm not happy about that because a lot of them were EPA restrictions. Oh, that's only a on few. Water pollution and air pollution. Oh, no. <laughs> now, yes, see you're raining on his parade. That's bad. Uh, it seems that the FBI planted a spy mm -hmm. in the Trump presidential campaign yeah. uh, in the hierarchy. Now, the FBI did not do this on their own. If they did, Heads must roll, and I mean heads, the guillotine, as this would be Gestapo tactics, the secret police spying on private citizens. John Brennan from the uh, CIA mm -hmm. is thought to be behind some of this because he is speaking out angrily about this. So you're assuming that this actually happened? Oh, I know it happened. <laughs> I, I, I do. Then, uh, and yes, what, because they're purpose? running, they're running. They wanted to sabotage the Trump campaign. They wanted to know what they were doing so that they could feed it to the Clinton campaign and they could counter the moves that uh, the strategy that the Trump campaign was uh, going to go forward with. But why choose an FBI agent? Well, good point. Hang on a second. So, John Brennan is thought to be, the insiders think John Brennan is, uh, was the head of the CIA at the time, is thought to be involved. But would he dare do this Gestapo type deal without involving Attorney General Loretta Lynch <laughs> and then President Obama? Oh, funny. Who knew what when is the question. Oh. This is going to be the biggest of the scandals. The plot thickens. You know, I know you're looking at it with a jaundiced eye, but it's real. And the, and the proof of the pudding is that NBC and CBS aren't really talking about it. Mm -hmm, They're true. sitting on it. I mean, and but it's going to come out. That's incredible. It is incredible. But they, um, in fact, Judge Napolitano was on with um, Stuart Varney this morning. And the judge has got sources that you wouldn't believe. And uh, he said, look, he said, the insiders know who the spy is they put in there. Oh, of course they would. If they... Yeah. And he's a college professor. And uh, they know. And they got him nailed. So this is all going to be brutal as they roll this out. And the president's asked for a special investigation, and it's been turned over to the inspector general for. Now, why is this coming this. out now? I, the campaign is long over. Yeah, but they're delving into what happened, and this leaks now. Um, they had to counteract Hillary's book. How did it oh, happen? <laughs> uh, she's pathetic. Uh, Boy, did the, this country dodged a bullet when they missed her, I'll mm -hmm. tell you. Wow. In 2016, the average employee took 10 days vacation. In 2017, the number dropped to nine. That's incredible. People are turning back their vacation to work mm -hmm. or being pressured to work. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. Well, a lot of times if you leave work, when you come back, it's twice as hard to do to get, everything. Yeah. Get back up on the horse. Yeah. Uh, tuition at colleges and universities 
is up 400% in the last 30 years. Oh, well, the last 30 years, definitely, yeah. Yeah, but still, I mean, that's, that's a lot higher than uh, uh, salaries have gone up in the oh, last yeah. 30 years. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, China agrees to buy more goods from the U.S. That's why the stock market's up big this morning. President Trump rides again. <laughs> okay. Uh, when President Trump referred to MS-13 gang members, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer immediately defended them. Do you know what their motto is? MS-13, rape, control, kill. And they're not animals? Uh, well, th this stuff here is, uh, I'm not going to get to it. It's going to have to wait till next time. Because we just got the two-minute warning. Yeah, we did. Uh, a tr now, hey, one thing, folks. Summer's coming. If you see a kid in a car and that kid looks distressed, do something immediately. A child's body heats up three to five times faster than that of an adult. Don't walk away from a kid trapped in a car. I don't think there's a judge or jury in the world that would convict you of anything if you broke a window in that car. So there. That's a I want bit you, of advice. I want you walking around parking lots this summer <laughs> with a big hammer looking at cars. How's that sound? It doesn't sound very pleasant to me. Oh, there you are, not willing to cooperate. Boy, oh boy. Um, well, folks, we have uh, managed <laughs> one page out of about six. Mm -hmm. By the way, I have a list of good things. You challenged me some time ago. Let's talk about good things. And I made a whole list of good things, oh, good. and we never got to it. So there, folks, tune in next time to hear Bill's list of good things. And on that note... We'll say good night or good afternoon. I don't think we're on in the morning, so. <laughs> anyway, hasta luego. See you later. Yeah, what's that mean anyway, hasta see, luego? See, see, see you later? Yeah. I get all the moods, I'm telling you. Uh.